Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's like, if you want different results, change your approach. It's very similar to that. And I was like, oh my goodness, like where in my life am I hitting the same approach and expecting different results? This podcast is all about shining light on the real struggles and joys of life. We will have real experiences, real people, and real stories in the hopes that they motivate you and help you in your own journey. This is the One World Countless Stories podcast with Selena Novello. Hello, hello, and welcome to the One World Countless Stories podcast with me, Selena Novello. Today's episode, I'm a little bit more comfy than usual got my spot on my bed i'm sitting here it is a little bit later than when i normally record a podcast the lighting's not as good but we're doing with what we have um but today's episode is something i'm very very passionate about and i'm living through it right now and i see it all over the place around me and i am going to be talking about something that i feel like is not really talked about that much And that is how hard and confusing it is to be in that transition phase of being in your young, early 20s, um, but also coming like out of high school and figuring out like, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? And I have been on this extremely interesting journey. And the last couple of weeks have been very insightful for me. And I want to share what I've learned with you, but also just reflecting on some of the things that I have gone through and that I've done, and then share with you some very tangible things that you can start doing today, whether you're in that transition phase of your older teen, beginning, early 20s, even mid 20s, even late 20s. And even if you're restarting your life now, this applies to you. If you want to change your life drastically in the over the next year, this episode still applies to you. But since I'm in my early 20s, I'm really speaking from like my experience, what I've been going through. And today we have so much that I want to cover with you because I'm walking through it right now. But before we get into that, I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for being here. It means the world to me that you're here listening to this podcast. This community is so special to me. And because you're here listening to me, I get to do what I absolutely love. I get to connect with people. I get to interview people. And I get to share all the information and things that I learn with you. And I'm just so grateful for you. So thank you so much for being here and coming and sitting and chatting down with me. Whether you're driving, you're walking, you're journaling, whatever you're doing, Thanks for having me with you and, you know, listening and downloading. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that follow subscribe button, leave a review. And if you're old, if you're older and you've been here for a while, leave a review because that helps the podcast grow. Drop a couple stars, whatever you have time for. That would be amazing. Um, This podcast has been such a gift and I love it so much. And this end of this season and the next couple episodes and even next season is just going to keep getting juicier and juicier and juicier. And I'm just so excited for all that this podcast has. So quickly, drop a drop a comment, drop a message, drop a rating, share it with somebody if you have found this podcast to be helpful to you. But other than that, thanks for being here. And we're going to get started right away with today's episode. Now, we are recording this episode literally 12 hours before it's going to go out. Like I said at the beginning, we're more of a comfy vibe. But today, I was planning on recording it earlier in the day, but things did not just did not happen. It was a rainy day. I woke up and I was kind of in this slumber where I was like, ugh. And then I was like, oh, but I really like over the last couple of weeks, I was like really thinking about this episode, what I wanted to talk about, because I had a lot of stuff already pre-done and batched. But I was like, I really want to be intentional with what I'm going to talk about and say. And so I was like, hmm, like I want to talk about what I've been going through the last couple like weeks heavily, maybe the last month or so with dealing with rejection and figuring out what's next and how to keep going and how to keep moving through all the struggles of being a young adult in this world where there's just so many options. 
And so I was brainstorming, thinking of lots of things. And then today I was like, okay, you know what? We're not having a great day, but we're going to go on a walk. And let me tell you, that walk literally cured me. Like if you want to know the secret of how to make yourself feel better, get unstuck, feel out of a lump, literally just go outside, get some nature, be be outside like I literally went outside and I felt so much better my energy was better coming back home it was just everything was better after I'd been outside and it was so great but on this walk I was really intentional about about what do I want to say and what is the message for today so I've come up with some really good stuff and I hope that you enjoy this episode So here are some of the main topics we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the BS. Do you want to know what the BS is? It's not bull. You know, you know, you know what? It's not B. It's not BS. It's BS belief system. We are going to talk about the belief system you have. We're going to talk about pressure. We're going to talk about disappointing, disappointment and disappointing others. We're going to talk about failure and failing forward. We're going to talk about rejection. We're going to talk about overthinking. We're going to talk about reframing and what you give meaning and reframing what's happening in your life. We're going to talk about your vision. We're going to talk about the next steps and we're going to talk about authenticity. So we are talking about a lot today. So buckle up, get ready for this episode because I'm so, so excited. Now, like I've said before, This is something I really don't feel like is really talked about that much. And it's talked about a little bit on more of like a one-on-one kind of basis, but it's really not talked about on like a big social media platform kind of thing. Like I see some people talking about it, but not enough. And we're not talking about how difficult it actually is to be in that transitioning phase in today's day and age. Now, I want to quickly say that like, I think that it's amazing where we're at and I'm so grateful for all the opportunities I have and the opportunities that other people have and that we have progressed over the years and generations of what it looks like to be a working woman, a working person. And so I want to say that I'm not coming from a place of like everything is bad, everything is like the worst because a lot of things are amazing. I'm just saying that it can be so confusing and overwhelming and there's just so many things. So I just wanted to say that right away that like there is a piece of me that's very grateful for everything that goes on and that the opportunities we have and the way that we can make money is so different now. So I wanted to start off with saying that. So. I believe that there is this misbelief because I know it's true for me and I know that this is something that is very true for me where I believe that we believe that we have to pick one thing and stick with it for the rest of our lives, which is not true. Like this is a misbelief. This is something that a lot of people believe, but it's honestly not true. And I got reminded of this the other day because I was talking to someone and just sharing about my experience and they were like, you know, you can do so many different things in your lifetime. You don't have to just do one thing. And the cool thing is that we get to experience new things, try new things. And if things don't work, then we move on to the next thing. Um, And it's about recognizing that we actually don't have to do the same thing for the rest of our lives. There is so much pressure, whether it's unspoken pressure or pressure that's put on us by our teachers, our parents, our environment, the people who are around us, and we don't even know what the heck we want to do. And I believe that there's gaps in the school system. And now I'm not going to be talking about the school system too much today in this video, but I do think that there's a gap where there's not enough experience because we all go through high school and you, and spending our younger life learning and growing, which I think is a beautiful thing, but we are not experiencing different Uh, career opportunities and of course there's options and electives and things that we get to do through that but as we get older it becomes less and less and less and we don't get the opportunity to go out and experience different careers and some people go outside of high school and do extracurriculars and have experiences through that but I believe that it there's not enough that we get to experience when we're younger to have our whole lives figure out by the time we get out of high school, which is not what is said, but it's almost expected that we have to know what our next steps are after high school when we don't even know what the real world is like. 
And in the school system, I believe that we are really not trained to think outside the box. Now, this is not an attack on any teachers because there has been some amazing teacher that teachers that I have had that do help you and push you to think outside the box. But really, we're not we're in this system and we're not being pushed that hard. Certain areas we can you can push yourself harder. But there's just not as many opportunities to experience new things in the career world. So we hit grade 12, we're graduating, we're moving on to college or university or unemployment or whatever it is. And we feel like we have to figure it all out. And I know I felt like that where it's like, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? And that's an extreme amount of pressure. And so in this episode, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to tell you what I think is better or what is worse. And often when people are in this state, when I was in this state, I'm looking for anyone and everyone to tell me what to do. And you're not going to find that here. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to bring you through my experience, what my journey has been so far. And of course, you can take a page out of my book. Um, But I'm not here to tell you what to do because I'm going to encourage and challenge you to look inward and find what that is for you, which is one of the hardest things because we are surrounded by distractions. We have our phones, we have activities. There's literally like it is more difficult to meditate and be quiet and be with ourselves nowadays than it ever was because we have these phones that have us linked to everyone so much. And so I'm going to challenge you to do that. And throughout this episode and throughout the next little bit, I'm going to bring up some really tangible things that you can actually do. So my experience, I'm going to give you the quick and dirty rundown to where I am presently and then get a little bit more into. But spoiler alert, up until last week, I was still very confused and still so unsure and uncertain of what I was going to do and what my future looks like. Because I have constantly been in this state of fear of making the right and wrong decision. I would never want to make the right or wrong decision. So let me start this off with you. First of all, I graduated in 2020. So I was a COVID graduate. Then that was its whole experience on its own. I didn't have a graduation. It was really odd. And the end of my grade 12 year went online. And so the original plan back when I was younger, was always to go to school and continue to go to school. But then I met somebody at an open house at, say, actually, this lady I met in the elevator, and she provided me with a really good mindset of, I've been in school for 12 to 13 years. I deserve a break before I go into school. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a gap year. I'm going to go travel, do something, and I'm going to take a gap year. But then COVID happened. And COVID butchered all the plans that were there to take a gap year because it didn't make sense that I don't go to school because there was nothing really else to do. So I applied to Mount Royal. I got into Mount Royal and that's a university here in Canada. And so I did Mount Royal online for a year and I did really well, even though it was self-directed all online and there was no communication in person with anyone and I did really well, but my heart really wasn't in it. And making the decision to take a gap year was a huge decision because there was lots of elements to it, but I was so, so afraid of disappointing people, of making the wrong decision, of what will I was a fear I was afraid of what other people would think what does that mean about me but in all reality I was just deferring and not even dropping out at that point so deferral means that they hold a year just in case you didn't know that so I was like okay this is gonna be great we're gonna you know we're gonna not go to school and it was hard it was a hard year But I remember when I made the decision, and I've talked about this a lot before, when I made the decision not to go back to school, I physically felt a release. My body felt more relaxed. I was calm. I was centered. And it felt like the right thing to do. So at that time, I was starting to build a little bit of my other businesses through social media and different things like that. So I was continuing on with that and making lots of money. 
And then I went to Europe and I got pushed because my mom pushed me to do it because I was really in a depressive state when I decided not to go back to school. And then I was like, okay, but now what? Like, I have all these things going for me. I started a YouTube channel. I started this podcast. I started things that I was afraid of. And so I was building all these things. I started a business. I started doing all these things. And it was scary, but I did it. And I was so proud and I was working and making lots of money. And then all of it kind of simmered down, slowed down and stopped. And so it was like, now what? And so I went into a lot of these phases of what my therapist likes to call the um, resting of the dark soul. I think that's how, I think that's what it was. Um, because I would go into these really, really deep, dark times because there was so much on my mind all the time, always turning, always going, what do I do? How do I make more money? How do I do this? All the questions that we typically ask ourselves. And so I was like, you know what? I really want to travel. My mom was like, okay, here we go. We're going to get you to Europe. I went to Europe and it was the best time of my life up until that point. I went with her for two weeks and then I did the rest solo traveling and I met the coolest people, experienced so much about myself. And I had a beautiful breakthrough before I went about myself. And so it was just, it wasn't like I was running away from anything. It was just such a beautiful time in my life. And I honestly, I was traveled a lot before then, but always in a group or with a family, but I became addicted, addicted to travel. I loved who I was becoming, who I was. And I was loving myself. I was learning about myself. I was trusting myself. And it was a beautiful time. And then I came back home after extending my trip and everything was going to continue. You know, I was continuing to work on my clients and my business while I was traveling and, and everything was absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for a better way. But once I get back, then it's like, what next? There's this underlying question of like, what's next? What's next? And I always want to do the right next thing. I want to take the right next step. So I often got stuck there. So I was like, okay, I need to decide if I'm going back to school or not because they're holding my spot for a year. And I had this scholarship, not a full ride or anything, but enough money that I was like, I need to use this money and get this education with this money. So I went to university, I went back and I was like, okay, I'm ready for this new chapter. I'm excited. But the day before I went, I had a breakdown and I was crying on my kitchen or on my table, not on the table, sitting at the table. And right then and there, I knew that this was not the right, not right for me. But I pushed through and I said, you know what, we're going to give it a go. I'm going to do a semester at a time, take it one day at a time. And I was really like, who knows what this could lead to? I can meet someone new. I can make new friends. Who knows what this could bring? It could bring a million things. So I started getting excited about it. And at that time, I was running my businesses and being a full time student and 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 being a busy person as normal. And I really just felt out of out of line like I did really well it was never a question of you know dropping out because I wasn't good enough or I didn't have good grades or I wasn't forced to leave I got to leave on my own merit doing really well in school and being like this is just not for me right now and what ended up happening is there's some things with the scholarships that ended up happening and so I was like if that element is not there anymore you know The thought came, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to stay. And then I had a conversation with one of my really, really, really best friends. And she was like, wait, why are you still in school then? And I was like, it's a good question. I pondered it. She's like, you don't really need school. You are efficient on your own. You're providing for yourself already. And so she really like helped me move the needle on like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave again and officially like drop out. And it was scary and it was emotional. And, and like every big decision I have to make, I can see these patterns where I'm so stuck because there's so much uncertainty, 
but I just don't want to do the wrong thing. And I am a born person pleaser, but I've worked on that a lot. And so it was no longer, I mean, at the beginning, it was like, I want to please my parents. I want to please my aunt and uncle. I want to please the people around me. Right. But it became something way, way more than that, where it was like, I need to think about myself. And I've been doing a lot of work on per- pe- person pleasing. So I I left and I left school and it was, I was, I've met some really great people and I learned some awesome things. And the thing about schools I and, and learning is I love to learn. Like learning is one of like my core things that I love to do. It's just in the traditional school system way, I just don't love it as much. And I had this one entrepreneur class and she was amazing and it was awesome. And I learned lots of stuff and I knew lots of stuff and I literally got an A plus. Like I think I got one assignment that was below an A plus because and that was kind of like a sign to me that I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Like I have a lot to learn. Don't get me wrong, but I am further than I think I am. And so I was pretty confident in my decision in leaving and being like, okay, I'm going to take things to the next level. And the other thing is I'm a big, big love of travel, like I said. So with doing school, I could barely travel and that was killing me. Like I love to be able to just go when someone's like, hey, there's an opportunity to go there. So the last couple, like the beginning of this year, January, February, March, I've been doing lots of little travel things, little trips to the U.S., hockey tournaments, fun things, nothing too crazy for travel, but still doing travel and just working on my business, maintaining things and, you know, figuring out what I can do. Another part of me is I'm definitely like an overachiever, like I'm from a family full of workaholics. And so when I was doing less, I was like, I went from doing a lot to a lot less. I was beating myself up. You're not doing enough. How do you do more? Blah, blah, blah. All these things. And it became a lot like I can really tell when I get in that overthinking loop. So now we come, where are we at? So where are we at? Uh, Let's see. We come to present day, which we are in May now, but February, March, April. Yeah, March, April. Okay, so I went to Hawaii with my grandma in February, which was absolutely amazing. And I had the best time there. I was definitely on fire. I got a new client in my business after I got back in just April, actually, March, April. And in April, I also went to Mexico with my family and Vegas for a leadership training. And so I've been quite busy this since like just 2023 in general and doing lots of stuff. Um, But there's still moments where I was like, I'm not doing enough. What am I doing? What am I working towards? What is the purpose of this? And I had some opportunities with two big companies that I'm very passionate about. One, I was doing this program with my friend that we applied to, and it was like the perfect plan ever. I was going to work with them from May to August, and then September to November, I was going to travel. So I had this perfect plan. And then I also got reached out from this other company who wanted me to work for them and take a role that I was so passionate about and felt like it was such like it was the right path I was going down. It was more towards training, less towards social media. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the best. And so we're why why am I telling you this? So we're in Mexico and, you know, I'm talking with the one company that wants to work with me that they approached me and we are talking back and forth, things are happening. And since I'm traveling September to November, it makes it really hard for me to do this position. So they decided to withdraw my application. And at first I was devastated because if you think about it from my perspective, this was like everything and anything I ever wanted. And I was going to make as many sacrifices as it was like, I was going to sacrifice the travel to make this work because I wanted this position so bad and it was in the training and teaching realm and also in coordination. And I just thought like this, this is it. And so when they withdrew my application at first, I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay. Oh, I was like, okay. 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 (laughs) I was like, okay. (laughs) Um, just figuring out how I felt about that because it was hard because I really wanted it and I really wanted to do it. And so 
I was like, okay, okay, we're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. It, it ended on really good terms. It's open to more potential in the future. It's going to be fine. And I was like, that morning I asked the universe for like a sign. And then they said that they're withdrawing me. So I'm like, okay, universe pop off. Like there's your sign. Then we go continue on my day. I'm still like feeling it out, like feeling the emotions, letting myself feel it. And then later that evening, I find out me and my friend didn't get this position that we applied to from May to August. And it was a double whammy in one day. And I was in paradise. I was in Mexico. And I found out that I wasn't getting these two opportunities. And both of them were definitely going to provide me with lots of tools. It was going to be amazing. And so I was like, not okay for like a good day where I was like, letting myself feel everything. But I was overthinking and my brain was tired. But I was like, okay, well, why did this happen? What's wrong with me? What like turning it into myself very negative. And I was like, okay, hold on. Mm, No, we got to stop this because it's not helping anyone. So I let myself feel it for a day Threw myself a little pity party. I was like, this really sucks. You know, because I'm a planner. I love to have a plan. I had a plan. And it all went to poop. Like it just, it all went to, excuse my French, it all went to shit. And I was like, oh, because the money was lined up. The travel was lined up. Everything I wanted to do and new experience, everything was all lined up and it just didn't work out. And then I was like, okay, you know what? There's no point of me laying in this bed all day, feeling all these emotions. One, I'm in Mexico. What am I doing? I need to be out at the beach. And two, I truly believed that these opportunities were removed from me because there was something bigger and better out in store. And when I reframed it and got a different mindset towards it, I was like, you know what? Like, it's a big loss, but it happens. And it was like major rejection. And my plan got shambled. But I was like, okay, you know what? these opportunities didn't happen for me because it wasn't the right time. And there's something bigger and better out there for me that this would have distracted me from. And I was honestly a little proud of myself because I was like, damn, Selena, like you turn that around quick. Um, But it's so easy to get in this root of like, and like the self-talk that's so negative and nothing works and all this, but it's actually really, 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 really affecting you in a negative way. So then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this. Uh, it's it's going to be okay. I'm going to keep going. I have lots of things still happening. And from my Mexico trip, I jumped on the plane home and jumped on the plane to Las Vegas and did this training. And I've been talking a lot about this training. It's called Rapport. The last two episodes were kind of inspired by it. And this is like the next level. And my experience there was phenomenal. I arrived there and I was like, this is exactly where I'm meant to be. And everything felt so right within my body where I was like, Something big is going to happen while I'm here. And this feels so right. And it has been, it was, it's like a roller coaster because you go to this training, it's like a peak and then you go home and you're like, okay, how do I implement all these amazing things that I learned? And I kind of went through this like roller cycle where I'm very much so like ready to act, ready to take action. But I was like overthinking, stopping myself, getting stuck in my own way, getting in my fog, like getting in a fog and being like, I have to make a decision. And so this is where the decision thing came up where I'm like, okay. so when the word decision and when I have to make a decision, Selena gets a little unsteady. And that, again, roots from because I've asked myself, like, okay, why, why? Why? You can always ask why a thousand times to get to the core of why you're thinking something or why this happens. And so I was really getting stuck in making the right or wrong decision. I was really afraid of making the right or wrong decision. And I'm like, at this point, I got it from from this training. I know my belief system is I can I have this mentality where I'm like, I can do anything I set my mind on and anything I want, I can go get. And I recommend getting that um, mindset because it's honestly such a power tool. And so I was like, okay, 
So I can do anything and everything. How overwhelming do you think that gets? It gets very overwhelming. So I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the decision is. I don't want to make the wrong decision. Like I semi know what I want. I don't really know what I want. I do really know what I want. All these things. And there was this exercise in this training where we had to write out like our timeline of how far we've lived and what's left. And when we did that on a timeline, I put like everything that's happened pretty well on the timeline. And then everything else that was in the future, I just kind of placed around the line. And I realized I do that because I'm not really claiming anything. I'm just kind of like, well, I want to be this. And when it happens, it happens. I'm not really like, I'm going to be this at this time. And so I had a lot of like uh aha moments at this training and just some amazing things. And some of the things that really, really stuck out to me, like a couple key like quotes and sayings, which is my absolute favorite, this quote is, if nothing changes, nothing changes. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And when I heard this quote, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. And then the other quote on, on top of that is, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And it's like, if you want different results, change your approach. It's very similar to that. And I was like, oh my goodness, like where in my life am I hitting the same approach and expecting different results? Where am I not showing up for myself? Where am I being complacent with myself? And so these were some really, really big quotes. And I, and I encourage you to reflect on like what they mean to you and all that because it's just amazing so now I've been in this kind of like okay what what am I gonna do I have so many things am I gonna enhance what I'm doing am I not gonna enhance what I'm doing and it came down to a lot of things so now I'm gonna bring you through some tangible things that you're gonna do that you can do if you would like so the first thing is you need to figure out your bs You need to figure out your belief system and you need to ask yourself, what is helping me and what is holding me back from my greatest and most amazing self? So this is like your belief system. So this is like, I'm not good enough. I can't do things. I'm dumb. All those things are not helping you. But the belief systems that are helping you is that I'm capable, I'm trustworthy, you know, so take a look, write them all down and then go ham with some colors, circle the ones that are bad in red or that are holding you back in red and circle the ones that are helping you in like green or blue or whatever color you want purple. And this is going to help you because it's going to provide you with awareness and you're going to realize what is actually holding you back. The other thing I recommend is doing, experiencing new things. Now, like I said, in high school, I feel like we don't really have the opportunity. And I feel like a lot of people rush into university because that's the right thing or that's what's kind of expected or that's what your parents want. And I think that if you know what you want and you want to be a doctor and you want to get that education, start right away, go for it. But I also believe that you need to experience new things. Make mistakes. Go learn fail, pick yourself up, go again, fail again, keep going. And it's so easy for me to sit here and say that. But honestly, I've learned so much by failing. I've learned so much by mistakes. But when I make those mistakes, I don't make them again because I'm constantly learning from those mistakes. But we're all so afraid to make mistakes. I have been a perfectionist for so long. I was so afraid to paint because I would make it look ugly or like go out of line. But there's so much beauty in being unperfect. And that's why we're all unperfect. And something that I love about nature is how beautifully it is. We love it all. And it's so unperfect imperfect and so it's like just do it go fail go do things because if you never do something you'll never know and that's that's as simple as it gets now the next thing is one of the easiest and hardest things to do ask yourself what do I want and then follow it up with what am I doing now and how can I help myself Or what do I need to do to get to myself where I want to be, where I want to go? 
Because the first step is awareness, going and ex- experiencing new things. But then you got to ask the questions and then you got to do the work. The next thing is reframe what you're doing. So recently I've been, you know, pretty determined and have a bunch of things already going on. And the biggest shift for me was reframing it. So for example, I am on a mission to sell all of my jewelry from my previous company. And I was like, oh, but I get to do a 15 minute conversation with people. So this is again, letting me get my selling skills out and also my communication and public speaking out and, you know, have an opportunity to speak to people. Um, and so I was like, I'm going to reframe it. And one thing that we really learned in this training is that hum- we, us as humans, we give everything meaning. So why not make it a positive meaning? Why not use that to your benefit and give specific things better meaning and reframe it to make it a stepping stone? For me, I was always like, oh, I'm either behind or I'm lo- like, I don't know if this re- resonates with you, but I'm behind. I'm wasting time. All these things. No, get rid of that you are taking another step towards where you're meant to be. Now, being authentic is very, very important. And let me tell you, if you're not being authentic, your body will let you know, your heart will let you know, your mind will let you know, the environment will let you know. And I very much felt that when I was in university, how unauthentic I really felt there versus being very authentic when I was traveling. And it's so easy to get stuck in following money. And honestly, like I had a moment where I was like, okay, you know what? I didn't get all these things. I'm going to get a normal job. And then immediately my my mind was like, what did you just say? Did you just say you want to get a normal job? Because I'm very entrepreneurial and I have lots of things and all this stuff. Like I have lots of opportunities in the entrepreneurial realm. And I was like, that was me following money. And my mind kind of went like, okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Now, of course, money is important. We need money to live. We need it to survive. But we need more people in this world to do things that make them come alive. And that doesn't always have to be a career, but it could be hobbies. But I believe if you follow your heart, follow your passions, follow what you're good at, follow the things that make you light up, you are going to be closer and closer to the answer that you're looking for. Because I was always like, I don't know what I want. People would ask me, well, what do you want? Well, I don't know. But deep down, I do know what I want. And I've just never been able to say it and claim it fully because I'm so afraid of what will happen and what won't happen. But there's so much magic when you focus on what comes alive. And I realize that I'm a lot closer to the answer than I think I am because I know a lot about what I love to do. Again, so ask your questions. What makes you come alive? Or if you have no idea, you know, start keeping track of things like, okay, today I felt really good. Why? Ask that why question as much as you can, because honestly, it will lead you down to a road that will help you a lot. And being authentic is something that you want to do your whole life. This goes for all ages. You could be in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your early 20s, your late 20s. It's so important that we live authentic lives and we're in touch with our intuition and we're in touch with who we are and who we were born to be. And I just think that if we could figure out how to do this at a younger age, because I know a lot of people who are honestly rocking it, slaying away, who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, restarting their life, creating new patterns, changing their belief system that they've had for 50 years. It's awesome. But imagine what could happen if our generation, the younger generation, started following their passion and learning from people. On this podcast, I always ask, like, what is the best or what is a piece of advice you tell your younger self? And so often is it, I wish I didn't take myself so seriously. I wish that I, you know, was more confident in myself. All these different things. I've heard so many different answers, but it's really about just learning how to live authentically and being yourself and not holding back because you're afraid of what others are going to think. You're afraid of failing and afraid of rejection, afraid of all these things, because honestly, they're going to come. There's so much uncertainty, but we know that all these things are going to happen. And so let's just, let's ride the roller coaster instead of trying to stop it and be all over the place. 
Let's ride that roller coaster. Now, the next thing is your vision. This is really big. So you've been given a very special vision. I've been given a vision. I can see my life fairly vividly in the next couple of years and my career. I've been given this vision since I was 16 year old and I've been pushing it down, pushing it down. But I'm like, there's a vision and you were given the vision. But here's the cool thing. Nobody else was given your vision, only you. So that's why you need to protect it and you need to be careful with who you tell it because other people will project their fears onto you. And this happens so much in my life and so much in my whole journey because my parents have been through things. And when I'm like, I'm leaving school, their fears and things that they wish that they did differently are coming up for them. And so it's honestly them projecting their fears on me. And this is just a good thing to remember of like, okay, who am I asking for advice from and you know, are they credible? Do I want to listen to everything that they're saying? Like, of course, listen, but am I going to choose, listen, but choose what you're going to take and implement and apply. So your vision is so important. Now, the next one, almost one of the most important things after you've reflected, you've become aware, it's now time to take action, to take that action you need to start doing for me i'm like i've out of all these ideas all these documents of planning and things with no action so then what are they they're just sitting there so for me i figured out that i am in my creative mode i got myself an accountability partner we were like okay we're very similar we work very similar we are multi-passionate people have lots of things going on what are we going to focus on And for me, I came to the conclusion that I'm going to be in my creative mode, that I consume a lot of media. I consume a lot of like personal growth and like be better yourself media. And I don't make a lot of room for myself. And so mine is create, don't consume. And yeah, like, dude, follow my pattern, get an accountability partner, get someone who you know, like, and trust, and will keep you accountable, tell them what you're going to do, and then meet once a week, meet bi-weekly, but you just have to start, that's almost one of the hardest things, too, is you just have to start and stop waiting for someday, because what if someday doesn't come? What if it doesn't come? Because someday is today. We need to start today. We need to take little steps to either get ourselves out of where we are to get into who we want to be and do what we want to do. It can all happen in little baby steps. It doesn't have to be all the time, but you have to be taking action. Now, to wrap it all up, so where am I now? I am in a place, like I said, a creative mode. I have plans. I'm going to do some new things, experience some new things, figure out how to what my money goals are and how I'm going to reach them in my most passionate way and just start pushing myself and taking action for the things that I really want. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Now to wrap this episode up, thank you for being here for this 45 minute episode. Um, I just wanted to say that it's okay. It's okay not to know. You're not alone. We almost everyone has been through this or is going through it. You're not alone. I want you to hear me in that because so often through my experience, I felt like I was alone. I felt like nobody understood me. But hey, your journey is your journey, but you are not alone. And it's okay to feel overwhelmed. Heck, it's okay to feel. All these emotions are key points to get us to where we need to go. Go fail. Go experience things. Keep moving forward. Despite it all, keep moving forward and taking one step at a time to get to that bigger plan. Reframe those things that you're doing right now to help you be more passionate about what you're doing, but get to the bigger mission and bigger life and bigger dreams and bigger things that you want to do because this world is yours. If you've been looking for a sign from the environment, in in the environment, the universe, let this be your sign to start living your life, to start being more passionate, to start living your dreams and going after your dreams because yes, there's things you're going to need to take care of and have money and do all these things, but 
have fun, live life, dream big and go after those and work hard. Because, you know, we can put up the vision boards, we can have the big vision, but you have to take the action to make those things happen. So this is like my loving side, but also like go get her done side where it's okay. You don't have to have it all figured out. That's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm telling myself. Like, you don't have to have it all figured out and just enjoy where you are because life goes by so fast. And I say that because I've heard it from lots of people that I've interviewed. Life goes by so fast and it's easy for us to get stuck in our own heads when if we just opened our eyes and saw how much beauty beauty there is around us, which I do it all the time. There's so much beauty around us so much beauty around you so i want you to know that you are loved it is okay that you are going through this and you don't know what your plan is but i'm i'm cheering for you i'm rooting for you i'm here for you so thank you so much for listening to this episode this episode helped you inspired you or taught you something that you feel would be helpful to someone else share it send it with some send it to someone anyone um And thank you again for being here. You mean a lot to me. And I can't wait for the next couple of episodes on the One World Countless Story podcast. All right. Bye. See you next week or in two weeks.